All right, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome and introduce Dr. Robert Murphy, Executive Director of the Havey Institute for Global Health and the John Philip Fair Professor of Infectious Diseases here at Northwestern Spinebrook School of Medicine, who answers your COVID questions every Tuesday and Thursday on the Harvey Institute of Global Health's Facebook page. Today, Dr. Murphy will be answering viewer submitted questions and addressing the latest COVID headlines through today, the 5th of May. We invite you to submit your questions via Facebook at MU Institute for Global Health or by email at globalhealthinstitute at northwestern.edu. Leading the discussion today is myself, Sobi Wachowski, who is a research assistant with the Institute. So Dr. Murphy, I'm going to start with some updated COVID statistics. Great. So in the United States yesterday, we saw a number that I would hope we would never see again, which is 105,215 new cases. The booster shot rate still sits at a plateau of about 30% of the United States with hospitalization and deaths both slightly increasing. But in Illinois, we're seeing something really, really depressing, which is that hospitalizations have increased by 34%. In Illinois, we saw 5,754,000 new cases yesterday. And our seven-day average is right now 4,100. 189 new cases. What can you tell us about what is going on in the United States with this pretty like slow and drastic increase? Well, um, it's actually not slow, but it is drastic um, because these numbers are only reflecting the people who had a molecular test, like a PCR test. So they were in a hospital or a clinic that sends out to a CLIA certified lab and the lab reports the cases. All the home testing kits that people are very familiar with now are not included. So multiply this number uh, by uh, three, four, five, ten. I don't know. You can pick a number. We don't actually really know. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. And we said a couple of weeks ago. I said anyway, we're at the when the cases were really low, but these cases were trickling up. You know, this is the beginning of the sixth wave, and you know now it's just you're seeing hospitalizations. Uh, creep up. Um, and even in a couple areas, the death rate has creeped up, but the death rate is still very low. Yeah, no, absolutely. And this goes right into our first big headline, which is what is the latest Omicron, Omicron subvariants mean for reinfection rate? We're seeing a bunch of new subvariants. What can you tell us about this? Well, <clears throat> Omicron is, uh, doesn't care about how many people uh, it's infected and it mutates so fast that it gets around the immunity given by vaccines or prior infection. And uh, so the new variants are all more transmissible. So, you know, going from Delta to Omicron was a huge jump in transmissibility, 300 to 600%. Uh, and then BA2, you'd add another 25%, BA2.121, uh, BA you know, four or five is coming. All of them are more transmissible. Fortunately, the disease severity is not going along with transmissibility, but it's just spreading like wildfire. And this is being fueled by the cutback and like, let's live with COVID uh, philosophy that we have right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then our next big headline is the major threat to the next pandemic is vaccine hesitancy. What can you tell us about this like ginormous population of people in the United States that won't take the vaccine? Yeah, it's, it's not just the United States. They're everywhere. There are some countries that do much better. But keep in mind, the protection you get from the vaccine does not last that long, unfortunately. And the vaccine needs to actually be retooled uh, to work against these newer variants, just like we do with the flu. Flu shots does the same thing. So, um, and then vaccine hesitancy has kind of two components. One is the people that just don't want to take any vaccine. That's one group. One that just won't take the COVID vaccine, although they've taken every other vaccine, they're probably alive because of it. And three, there's the people that took the, the first two shots of the vaccine but then they never took any boosters. We're a very low boosted country. That protection wears off over time as these variants change. Uh, so uh, it's really important now at the beginning of the sixth wave that people get up to date uh, with their shots, yeah. with the boosters. Yeah, absolutely. And what can you tell us about this really, really unfortunate headline that hit yesterday, which is that we have reached 1 million deaths due to COVID-19 since the start 18 months ago. Um, what well, can you tell us about all of this? Well, it's, um, it's an incredibly sad number. 
many hundreds of thousands of those deaths uh, could have been prevented if people had taken the vaccines and had uh, followed the mitigations that were recommended. Yeah, so Dr. Murphy, it, can I share a? Can I yeah, share, so a share the graphic. I think people will will get an idea. While you're pulling that up, I mean, keep in mind the United States is number one in the world with the highest death rate. Also, Brazil is number two, um, and uh, it's just. It's, it's just a very sad situation that has been made worse by some of the, the public health uh, or lack of public health uh, um, consistency uh, in this uh, country. So it's, it's really a sad day and we're not over it. And you know, everybody's tired of COVID, but like you, COVID is not tired of us. And uh, keep up with your uh, vaccines, keep up with your uh, taking a drug like Paxlovid or one of the other ones that's going to be approved soon. Um, and, uh, you know, wear a mask when you're in a crowded place. And as the numbers go up, if it goes up in your region, you know, and as the cases go, you know, this has been peaks and waves with peaks and valleys. So, you know, we're going up right now. We should be more um, diligent. And then, you know, as they go down, we can relax again. And we're going to just have to live with this thing. So do what you can now. It's a it's a very sad uh, situation. This map, you know, shows uh, the deaths in the country, and uh, it's really quite sad. Yeah, absolutely. And now for our third big headline, which is that, what can you tell us about what Paxlovid about the Paxlovid relapses that are currently occurring? Yeah. So in the last two weeks, there have been literally dozens of reports of people. Um, rebounding with symptoms, and in some cases, even having their antigen turn positive again uh, after they finish uh, a course of Paxlovid, which is just five days. So this has kind of caught people by surprise because nobody, nobody even studied this in the original studies of Paxlovid because they just assumed you treat, okay, you have a couple relapses. It wasn't really looked for. So of course these cases come up. The the CEO, uh, Mr. Burla from uh, Pfizer, said, "Take another course of Paxlovid. It's like a new infection." The FDA this morning released a thing. There's no evidence that another course of Paxlovid works. Well, the reason why there's no evidence why another course of Paxlovid doesn't work is because it's never been studied. It not been studied anyway. How many people relapse? When the drug level of Paxlovid, the way Paxlovid works, when that drug level goes down, after, in other words, after you stop taking it, like 24, 48 hours later, the virus can replicate like mad. So it's, it's a, there's no long acting effect uh, of that drug, the way it works. Um, and that's most likely what's happening uh, in the couple of cases that uh, I'm familiar with, uh, three here in our own institution uh, here at Northwestern. Uh, patients were treated, they got better, they went off treatment. In, in a couple of cases, the antigen test, the, the, the home test they had went negative. And then within five days, they got sick again, symptoms got worse, and that antigen test turned positive. So, you know, that's just a couple of cases, but, you know, this is something that we don't even know how much of this happens. Fortunately, there's been no reports, even though there's been dozens of reports of re a rebound, Nobody, none of them ended up in the hospital. So that's good news. So um, it needs to be studied. Yeah, absolutely. And now for our first COVID question. Should people with underlying medical conditions such as high blood pressure, obesity, et cetera, get a second booster shot? Or is it only recommended right now for people over 50 and those who are immunocompromised? No, it's recommended for people over 50 and any of those high risk conditions, which includes uh, uh, high blood pressure and obesity. So everybody, it's, it's, it's actually quite a big group. It's about 30% of the United States. Yeah. Our second question. I recently had a cold, runny nose, sinus pressure, headache, and tiredness. I took two at-home COVID tests and they both came back negative. I am a Moderna vaccinated. I am Moderna vaccinated and boosted. My sister, who is unvaccinated, thinks I had Omicron because it is what her doctor told her. He told her that Omicron doesn't show up on COVID tests, that everyone who has any symptoms has it. Is it true? Well, there's a couple of things that are just wrong with uh, the belief going on in this question. For one thing, the symptoms of um, uh, COVID are like any other upper respiratory um, condition, 
caused by rhinovirus, uh, influenza even sometimes, respiratory syncytovirus, adenovirus, a bunch of them. Um, and you really can't distinguish. Uh, with the one exception is loss of taste and smell seems to be much more common with COVID. Uh, so you can't just tell with this runny nose, sinus pressure, headache, and whatever. Um, so if your COVID tests are negative in that case, you should go see a doctor and find out what it is. There's plenty of tests that can be done to identify influenza, which is also treatable, streptococcus, which is uh, treatable, so regular old strep infection, uh, and many of the other ones that are not treatable, but at least you could get a diagnosis um, and you didn't have COVID. I think uh, the fact that this person took two at-home tests while they were symptomatic, they probably did not have COVID. And they, they had one of these other things. They're out there. Uh, they just like didn't go away. Um, and uh, uh, the doctor telling her that uh, she probably had uh, COVID is just, uh, this is just not true. Okay. Um, and the, the statement that the Omicron variant doesn't show up on the COVID test is just flat out wrong. This is just not true. So this is just false information. Uh, everyone that has symptoms does not have COVID. So that's why you do that test. She did the test like she was supposed to, it's negative. She doesn't have it. If she's getting worse or something, you wanna get another test, get a molecular test. They're better even. But uh, in this case, I think she, uh, she probably just didn't have it. Those are just false statements. Wonderful. Now moving on to our third question. As more people are getting COVID multiple times, does it sometimes become less severe with each subsequent infection? What can you tell us about this? Yeah, people are getting COVID multiple times. Um, it started, uh, I, I didn't see too many of that. And then I had uh, a person who had COVID. This is... Uh, uh, last fall, um, and they had uh, they definitely had the uh, UK variant. They had the original uh, COVID, and then they got another one. They had gone to Europe, and they picked up the UK variant at the time. Um, so you know, I started. That was like the first case I had seen, and that's very well documented and been documented everywhere. And then when we had all those Delta cases last fall, the end of summer and fall. The people that were get there were people that got Delta in December, and then in January, like within a month, they had Omicron. So there was like no protection from prior COVID, whether it was Delta or something else. So it depends on the variant, uh, whether you're you're at risk for another infection. It depends on the variant you have, and it depends on whether you're vaccinated and vaccinated and boosted. So all these, those everything comes into uh, to play here as far as having multiple infections and symptoms. Now, the symptoms over time, it's really hard to say because, you know, most people just sit it out at home and don't do anything and they get better. You know, 1.2% of people in the United States die from COVID. So that means, you know, there's a lot of people that don't die from it. And there's a lot of people that don't end up in the hospital. Um, so you can't really say the symptoms get less, but we would expect as this thing transitions into an endemic state, like influenza, that a lot of people will have at least some immunity and that the severity of the disease, as long as the variants don't get completely out of control, uh, will, uh, they'll do better uh, over time. But this could be multiple years uh, of this happening. And if one of those variants is more severe, like Delta was a more severe variant. Um, if that happens again, we're in trouble. Right, absolutely. You know, this goes right into our fourth question, which is what is the risk of getting Omicron if someone in my home has it? Yeah, so this has been studied uh, quite a bit. Um, so uh, people living in a household, um, uh, you know, what's their risk? Uh, previously, this had been stated in a, in a variety of studies at about 18 to 20 uh, percent of people in the household. But this has changed as the variants have become more transmissible. And a huge meta-analysis that was uh, published recently, looking at 135 different studies. That's a lot of studies and a lot of patients that with Omicron, 
the household reinfection rate is about 47%. So it's like half of the people in the household are expected to get Omicron if somebody in the household has Omicron. Wow, that's a huge number. Well, those were all of our COVID questions and updated statistics for today. Thanks so much, Dr. Murphy. Okay, thank you and have a good day and uh, the rest of the week and the weekend. <laughs>